the Ford F-Series. Your dad has one, your dad's dad had one, and some say the Egyptians built the pyramids with them. So it's no wonder that they've become widely known as the best-selling pickup truck in the world. But these trucks weren't always the plush, luxury toy haulers we all know today. Set your clocks back to 1965 and you'd be presented with this, the fourth generation F-250. Believe it or not, this generation was a luxurious leap forward in the evolution of the F-Series. With new, twin I-beam independent suspension and progressive rear springs, ride quality was greatly enhanced over its predecessors. Finally, driving a truck was now markedly more comfortable than your average tractor or mule. And with a base price of about $2,000, or nearly $18,000 in today's money, it was good value too. In fact, the F-Series was Ford's least expensive model on sale in 1965. From six to eight cylinders, three-speed standard shift or cruise-o-matic automatic transmissions, buyers could select an affordable combination to suit their needs. So let's see how this steel-bodied steed has held up after nearly six decades. Born in the former San Jose Ford assembly plant, this F-250 hasn't strayed too far from home throughout its life. Like a high school dropout, this truck has spent its entire life in and around its hometown, doing manual labor for a living and loving every minute of it. Naturally, along the way, a life in the sun and dirt weathered its complexion to the point of disarray, warranting numerous paint jobs over the years. Originally white from the factory, it has since been repainted a slightly different shade of white. And upon the second respray, it underwent a color change to what you see now. The owner says it's red. I say it's more of an orange. Eh, tomato potato. Nobody knows when it was last painted, but what we do know is that it's seen better days. Being single stage paint, it lacks depth and shine, having faded from exposure to the elements. Up close, cracks and crow's feet litter the horizontal surfaces, while other areas look as if they've met the mean end of a stump. It isn't without rust either, the bed being the worst offender. That's a bit more than a dollop of Bondo could ever fix but I hear ramen noodles and epoxy can fix almost anything these days, so there's still hope. And finally, the slug trail of peeling paint leading up to the gas cap is just a result of poor foresight by the design team. I guess engineers in the 1960s just weren't aware that paint and gasoline don't exactly get along with each other. But you have to admit, the external gas cap does look rather awesome, so the risk is worth it. After all, it just takes a few extra shakes to avoid dripping, any man can attest to that. In 1965, the Ford F-Series was entering a new era of personal convenience. Your truck would no longer be just an extension of your barn. No, it would now have optional amenities that appeal to any sensible consumer. Walk into your nearest Ford dealer and select any number of exciting and luxurious optional extras for your F-250, such as a driver's door armrest, passenger sun visor, AM radio, a deluxe heater, and seat belts. <laughs> That's right, seat belts were an optional extra. This truck in particular was not optioned with them, but modern shoulder belts were installed at some point because laws. Amazingly, after 57 years, nearly all of these incredible features still function as intended, with the exception of the radio and the horn. Okay, so maybe that's like half of the available features, but in its defense, the radio would work if speakers were hooked up to it. So that's it. That's the whole interior. Also, the seats are quite bouncy. Bumpy. Up until the early 1980s or so, a car's life expectancy was generally limited to 100,000 miles or thereabout. Due to a number of factors from oil technology to manufacturing tolerances, engines were not regularly exceeding this six-figure milestone, thus the five-figure odometer readout. So it should be no surprise that this F-250 does not have the original engine. In fact, 
And this should also be of no surprise, the current motor was not even an option in 1965. You see, the 4th Gen F-Series was offered with three powertrains from the factory. A 240 cubic inch straight six was standard, with a 300 cubic inch straight six or 352 cubic inch V8 as optional upgrades. This F250 had the V8, but Farmer Joe wanted something more and dropped in a 390 V8 at some point within the last few decades. And even still, after purchasing the truck, the current owner performed an extensive rebuild of this engine. Cams, bearings, pistons, upgraded heads, and even boring the cylinders 30 over was just the start. But this sort of thing is nothing new. It's impossible to say for sure what else has been replaced over the life of this old truck. Probably everything. But does it really matter? These days, Fixing, restoring, and modifying vintage classics like this is more of an American pastime than baseball or obesity. It's the memories made along the way. The guilt felt from spending your child's tuition on another engine rebuild. And the sense of pride from fulfilling your patriotic duty to keep these dinosaurs on the road that makes it all worth it. So get in your garage, get greasy, and get on the road. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next mile.